Oh. And happy Heritage Week, happy National Heroes Day. The idea of heritage in the Jamaican celebration that we keep every year at this time in October is tied to the 11th of October, a very significant day in the Morant Bay uprising, as we should call it, or it should really be called a revolution, when the working class and the landed Black people of Jamaica decided that they would protest the ways in which they were being excluded by the state in terms of the hardships that they were facing. Indeed, this movement was a part of the advancement of the new Jamaica that would eventually emerge into independence. Heritage is important for Jamaicans because of so many reasons. Our heritage is diverse. And although we are a predominantly African descended population, the truth is that running through the veins of most persons of Jamaica are other ethnicities than the dominant one that they may even present. And that complexity is a part of the diversity of ourselves as a people. Heritage is important because whether it is the built environment, whether it is the, the, the food that we eat, whether it is the music that we sing, the, the rites of passage that we practice, our religious or social folk forms, whether it is of particular groupings, such as the Indians, the Chinese, the Jews, the Lebanese, of course, the Africans and the Europeans, they all form a part of who we are. And many people contest our motto out of many one people. Uh, the framers of our motto, like those who put Heritage Week and Heroes Day in place, understood the complexity of the expression out of many one people. So Heritage Week and Heroes Day presents us an, an annual opportunity to continue to wrestle and grapple to make that motto true, to ensure that wherever the gaps exist, that we can reflect on that and move forward to what Stuart Hall talks about as becoming as a part of identity, becoming, being, belonging, and becoming. Oil cannot be at the bottom, it has to float. And this day would come. And this is a great journey. And I'm glad you're all over the world because our story must be told. So I begin with the expression, Wabuika. And that is, hello, that's our first indigenous people, the Tainos. And when that European tourist came to St. Um, Anne, as they say, the world is history. In the 1790s, English surveyors were in Carpenter's Mountain, then part of there, now part of Southern Manchester. And they went into a cave and they saw two objects, Taino gods, the Taino gods. And they took them, 1792, to England and put them in the British Museum. But that same British Museum, it had its beginning in Spanish town. Because in 1689, 1689, Dr. Hans Sloan lived in Spanish town. He was doctor um, to the Duke of Albemarle, who was living in Port Royal. The Duke died. But while Hans Sloan was in Spanish town, he covered the St. The, the St. Catherine Hills and took back a huge collection of memorabilia, flora and fauna, indigenous objects to England. And that was left for acquired for the founding collection of the British Museum at Russell Square. But I want to highlight some parts of the history which are, are not highlighted. For instance, Nanny, 
It's just the other day that she's highlighted. In fact, some call her a myth. And my ancestors would say, you can't call her anything. But she's still somebody. For the uninitiated, it's somebody. Because Nanny, the British, they would not highlight her. And in 2017, in the Jamaican Parliament, Honorable Mike Henry shared with us an apology from Oxford University Press that they had not been promoting in their history about Nanny. And so we said that the day would come when we would hear that Britannia ruled the waves, but they could not rule the bush. And every country has a culture, but what about the culture that is preserved we call our heritage? This country, which Honorable Louise Bennett would tell us, we need to put it on the map. This little country has three UNESCO declarations. In 2003, UNESCO declared the music of the Moortown Maroons as one of the intangible heritage of mankind. Modesty does not allow me to say that I was a chairman for that committee and Honorable Olive Lewin was the facilitator with a committee of 14. Then in 2016, UNESCO declared the Blue and Jonker Mountain as part of the tangible heritage of mankind because it has historical values. That's where the Maroons were, I would never say in hiding, they were disassociating themselves from the British. And then in 2019, reggae was declared by UNESCO. What small country, what an outstanding achievement for this. I want also to remind children when they are reading and they refer to a dictionary, they will remember Dr. Samuel Johnson who compiled the first dictionary of the English language. But how many of them will remember that he was a Jamaican, was his secretary, a man named Francis Barber from Old Harbor, who as an enslaved went to England and found employment with Dr. Samuel Johnson as his secretary and his butler. And that Dr. Samuel Johnson left some money for him to sustain it. There are so many things that they would not know, but these have to be told. I want us to remember though, some Jamaican sayings, Magakawa Pasture, Abul Muma. And this one, chicken, a dongle heap. Dongle heap means the garbage, where you throw your garbage. But that chicken bone was coming off good table. 